Hey folks, right from DCRainmaker.com here. Today we've got the Aerolab sensor. So it's an aerodynamic sensor aimed primarily at the time trial realm, a triathlon realm, um, where you're gonna go ahead and measure your aerodynamic properties while you're out on the road. Now this is something I actually tried out last fall uh, up in Canada, and it was pretty impressive. I was out on the road with it, and I was using more of a prototype unit then versus this is much more Paul, still prototype, still kind of early beta unit, but way, way better than what you maybe have remember from back last fall if you saw the post on the blog. Now the goal with something like this is to give you real-time CDA or real-time feedback on what your uh, position looks like, what your uh, hardware, all that kind of stuff looks like out on the road. And certainly there are many different companies that can do that in wind tunnels or on track systems. Um, but the challenge there is converting that onto the road like two and three months later. So you go to a wind tunnel, you go to um, some sort of place where you're looking at those sort of things. And then you have to remember the exact position of you know, your thumbs and levers or you know, what you were doing uh, with the shoulders and all that kind of stuff three, four, five, six months later when it comes race day. So the idea with a lot of these sensors is to pull that onto the bike that can give you that real-time feedback so you can make those changes when you're two, three, four hours into an Ironman. And that's when it actually matters the most, not just in a wind tunnel uh, by yourself. Um, so a couple of interesting things about this, and I've got my notes here because it's it's the last day of the show at this point and I'm, I'm having trouble just doing anything. Um, so. Right now, they're looking for a consumer release of spring 2019. Uh, we're seeing a lot of these companies, like there's about five companies in total out there uh, that are looking at kind of real-time aero sensors. Uh, and, you know, I think what they're finding across the board is it's, it's one, harder than they thought. Um, but then two, it's harder to make that information understandable to people. So how do you take what is things like CDA, CRR, wind, wind angle power, and all that kind of stuff, and make it tangible to someone on the bike that may not be a, a geek like us, but maybe just want to get faster on the bike in real time on the Ironman. So a lot of these companies are having to kind of look at the software side of things a little bit more and say, how do we pull this data in? And in talking to the AirLab folks, they would kind of say that, you know, most of the time spent between now and next spring is around that software platform side of things and not necessarily so much the hardware. Um, of course, they'll continue to refine this and can make this more uh, kind of high volume production ready. But a lot of that's sort of the behind the scenes piece. However, at the same time, they're also doing what they're calling the engineering side of it. So this is, well, first, let me back for a second on the consumer side. For a normal consumer, what's gonna happen is this will broadcast those metrics. So your real-time CDA, which is essentially how aero are you, um, as well as other things like your wind and wind angle uh, to your Garmin via Connect IQ. Uh, so that data is sent to your head unit here, and then you can record that, display that, analyze that after the fact in different applications. But right now they're working with bike manufacturers and they're doing this from an engineering standpoint. So in that case, they've got this little funky thing um, that can measure much, much faster than your, your uh, Garmin can from a recording standpoint. So this is 200 times a second recording things versus this is only one time a second from a recording standpoint. The actual data coming off the sensor is all the same, but in terms of hitting it to a device that can record it, that's obviously a pretty big difference. So if you look at bike manufacturers, they want to have a sensor that can go out and do aero testing on their bikes from a bike design standpoint and do that at a much better data rate than a consumer would. They can also get more data out of that that they might be able to analyze later on that a consumer probably just wouldn't care very much about. Uh, a couple of interesting things here is that when it comes to like this sensor here, they have a little more lab quality data in it or a little more lab quality hardware in it. Uh, for example, this is going to do barometric altimeter readings at uh, a accuracy of plus or minus point or plus or minus 9.5 centimeters. So you think about like your current plots from a Garmin GPS today and you're like, no, I didn't do hundred meters over there. Yeah, this is 9.5 centimeters. Um, also their GPS readings coming out of this is a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, they're talking 10 times a second for this. And that's all the data that they need to be able to pull out these really accurate stats for companies that are trying to do something that is driving what, you know, could be multi-million dollar uh, product choices on bikes and things like that. So, so really important stuff. Finally, the last thing looking at doing is to having a coaching version. So you've got this consumer version that's just, you know, one of these paired to a Garmin, and then you have a coaching version, which is essentially multiple sensors and then a software and platform behind that. So a coach can go and work with multiple athletes out there using aero sensors to get that data. Uh, so again, a lot more software driven uh, behind the scenes. They're looking at all that stuff from a coaching consumer standpoint to be next spring, whereas the engineering side of that, that's more coming up this fall here. Uh, and even now already working with some of those companies in very kind of early beta standpoint. Also, it's interesting on the engineering side, when they're working with the bike companies, uh, they're not technically selling this device to them. They're doing it as a lease. Uh, so it ends up being like more of an evergreen concept where they send this out to a bike company, they use it for a few months, they have updates to this from a hardware standpoint, and they just simply swap it out. They continue paying that same leased fee uh, versus having to invest in a single piece of hardware that's potentially constantly changing. 
Now, of course, there's lots more to come on the AeroSensor front. This is just one of, of many companies out there. Stay tuned to the channel, so go ahead and whack that subscribe button at the bottom there. Also, if you found this interesting, hit the like button. Um, I think I'll continue to do more and more Aero stuff over time, especially as the companies get closer and closer. You saw me do the AeroPod uh, post up there in the corner. Uh, and then, of course, there's other companies here at Eurobike uh, that are doing Aero stuff as well that I'm hoping to catch up with. With that, have a good one. Bye.